let's get started. So hi, I'm Amber from Influencer Updates on Instagram and tonight I'm going to be talking about the three most talked about influencer stories from the last fortnight because normally I come on weekly but I didn't last week as I was at the All Right Hey comedy show at the Melbourne Comics Lounge which was so so fun. I'll just give a quick rundown on that first. So, all right, hey, Matt Hay, he is a comedian. He has a podcast called High Scrollers with Brittany Saunders, and I just find him so, so funny. I paid for my ticket, by the way. Um, no one's asked, but I think that's pretty obvious. I paid for my ticket, went with my sister, and yeah, we also bumped into Tim Collins, who is 100% that Tim on Instagram, and yeah, we got some photos with him and chatted to him for a bit. He's just moved to Melbourne. And yeah, All Right Hey was just so, so good. Like, I can't believe he gets up on stage like that and just talks for an hour, like with no script, nothing. Obviously, he's got like a pre-prepared comedy set. He also had an interpreter at the show who did Auslan for the entire hour, which she was very entertaining to watch because she had to try and like keep up with him. And he actually speaks very fast, which is something I really like about him because I like listening to podcasts on like 1.75 speed, <laughs> bit crazy, but yeah, it was really good. And it was like dinner before it, you could pay for that on top of it. And my sister and I went early for dinner and we got what well, was pretty much front row. It was actually second row and yeah, it was a sold out show. So there were lots of people and I think it was his biggest show of the tour as well, like the biggest venue. So yes, yeah, very fun to see. And yeah, I think um, this earlier, later this month, I'm doing a like a panel thing. It's not available to the public. So it's PR people that can buy tickets for it. And I'm going to be on the panel with Kurt Coleman. So yeah, that should be really fun, but I'll talk about that after that's all happened and I'll probably post photos as well. <laughs> so I'll get back to my influencer stories. So the first story is about Indy Clinton. So this week I'm going to talk about her to-do list that was on her fridge, her subscription model, and also her social media break. So the first thing is her to-do list. Oh, in the background of one of her TikTok videos recently, it was in reverse because the way it films with the forward camera, everything's in reverse. So like her to-do list on her fridge behind her, if you screenshotted it and flipped the image, which somebody did and sent it to me, which is so amazing. <laughs> she had a to-do list that said, Monday, Sukan UGC, which means user generated content. Tuesday, Sukan night time routine. And then like you know, a few other things as well. She also spelled Fiji F-I-G-I -I, instead of J-I, which a few people found quite funny. But yeah, so Monday and Tuesday, she had sponsored content for Sukan booked in. But in the TikTok video, she was promoting a Sukan body wash. And she was just saying like, oh, like, by the way, randomly, I'm using this so you can body wash on the kids. It's really good for them. And there was no disclosure of an ad. Like the caption on the video was also like no disclosure there. But um, soon after I uploaded this, I don't know if she saw it or if other people might have been messaging her or maybe just coincidentally, she did change the caption and made it something like, you know, I'm um, sponsored by a chemist warehouse. So that was all fine. But um. Yeah, it was just funny at the time. And then also a few days later, she then filmed another TikTok video. And in the background of that one, because she knows that people had seen her previous whiteboard, she then made a new to-do list just to sort of like stir us all up. And it said, to-do list, de-sex Big Ed, who is her husband, <laughs> dye my pubes pink, wax Navy's mono, build, Navy's her son, build doghouse for Big Ed to live in so big dog build dog house for her husband to live in so obviously just like playing a joke with her followers which i really liked she was also wearing sunnies so these sunnies if you can see that um which i am thinking might have been a response to the fact that i'd had a few people message me about a live that she did during the week saying that her eyes seemed glazed over so there were quite a few different accusations about why that might have been the case I won't go into that, but um, yeah, I'm wondering if the wearing of the sunnies was in response to those accusations. As I said, I don't know how she would have seen this stuff, unless people screenshot it and sent it to her, of course, which does happen all the time. All right, so the second thing about her is her subscription. So I did mention a fortnight ago that she now is doing um, TikTok subscription, which is $9.99, I think it is, per month. And 
it was a bit awkward timing because she started it and then two or three weeks later she's now gone on a social media break where she's not going to be posting unless maybe her husband is posting in the subscriber thing for her i'm not sure about that but um i also wanted to talk about the fact that jade tunchi or jade bricky she bricky sorry jade bricky she has now also launched tiktok subscriptions so i've looked into it a bit and tiktok takes 35 percent of the money Google and Apple, like um, whoever does your payment, so like with an iPhone, Apple does your payment, with an Android, Google does your payment, they take 30% of the money. So that's 65% leaving the creator with just 35% of the money. So if it's $10 a month, Jade and India are only getting $3.50 of that. And I know that with my Instagram subscription, I lose like probably another 10, even possibly 20% with the conversion rates. So people pay my page they pay my page in australian dollars for the subscription that money then goes like through apple and google goes to meta like which is facebook and then they pay me in us dollars so i think that there might be like money lost in the conversion then they pay me back in us dollars and then i have to convert it back to australian dollars again and all up i only get about 50 percent of the money so i think that Maybe it's like, I guess, 50 to 60% of the money. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of money lost in the conversion there. So I'm imagining it's the same for Jade and Indy. So yeah, I'm just not sure really why it would be worthwhile for them to do this because Jade is saying she's going to have to be posting. Well, she's not saying she has to, but she's promising she's going to be posting subscription content daily. Her husband actually was in the background laughing about how it's a scam, the whole paying for extra content. He was just laughing about it. And, um, yeah, I think it's a really big commitment for her when, you know, influencers can do sponsored content and make money seemingly quite easily compared to having to get, you know, thousands of people to subscribe to make daily content worthwhile. So yeah, I feel like quite a few of them, it was the same with Instagram subscription when it started, they, a lot of them like signed up to it, like Sophie Guedelin did, Beck Judd did, and then very quickly they stopped doing it. I think that, yeah, probably financially, it just wasn't worth it for them. So yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about with Indie subscription. And the third thing with Indie was, it, yeah, she is on a social media break. So I've noticed in the comments section of her TikTok videos, um, a lot of people are saying, like Ben's been posting, her husband Ben has been posting videos on her behalf. And they're saying that their household seems the least chaotic it's ever seemed. But I think it's a lot to do with the editing. Like obviously their life is chaotic, but I think that ed, um, Indie really enhances the chaos with her edits. And that's what makes them so entertaining, of course. And also people are a little bit confused because Indy is actually in the background of quite a lot of the videos, just her voice. So she's definitely in the house with them all. And they're wondering like, what's the point of her going on a break if Ben's going to be posting the content anyway? But I definitely think that it's different. Like she's not showing up every day on social media. She's probably not yet. Yeah, she says she's not gonna be doing her emails for the approximately two weeks. And yeah, I was thinking she was going to go on a holiday potentially to Hawaii because that's where she wanted to go for her 26th birthday, I think it was. But um, no, she definitely seems to be at home and yeah, just in the background of the videos and just living, like having a genuine break by the sounds of it. Um, all right. So next story is Kayla Itzinas. So she has called out a children's play center on the Gold Coast. She, let me see what it's called. I've got a screenshot here somewhere. Why have I not got that? Oh, here it is. Um, so it's Bella's Wonderland Gold Coast. And she has said here that they gave her conjunctivitis. <laughs> so she said, I somehow ended up with conjunctivitis. I'm all better now, but who's going to be the one to tell Anna we're never going again to the play center? I recently took the, the uh, I really recently took the kids to a play center during their school holidays because they were begging me to go and everyone told me not to go because apparently they're a cesspool for gastro and conjunctivitis. I even went as far as researching to find a place that shows videos on how they clean everything daily. So yeah, if you go to Bella's Wonderland Gold Coast, if you go to like their TikTok, they show that they're cleaning all the stuff daily. And that's why Kayla decided to go there, but she still ended up with conjunctivitis. And I mean, she didn't name the venue, but she posted a lot of photos from the venue and I don't live on the Gold Coast. I don't, I'm not familiar with these centers, but like from the photos, I could very easily find which center it was. A lot of people in the comments were saying they know the center and yeah, they also potentially got gastro from there. 
I think that it's a bit cool to say that they 100% got conjunctivitis or gastro from a play center. Like it's pretty defamatory because it is possibly not true, especially with a platform as big as Kayla's. But the post is still up, so maybe Bella's Wonderland Gold Coast aren't too worried about it. Maybe it was good publicity in the end. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I don't know. I thought that was interesting. <laughs> um, she's also announced that there's a new sweat trainer. So her name is what is it? Sarah, Sarah Smith. Yeah. Sarah Smith. And she looks exactly like Kayla. I was really confused. Like I was watching the video and she's like, so meet Sarah. And then there was this girl talking and I was watching on mute as I always do. And I actually thought it was just Kayla in both of the videos. And I was like, well, when are we going to see the new trainer? This is the photo. So I put this side by side. <laughs> it looks like two of Kayla. It's so, so funny. But um, yeah, again, that was just a bit of a funny story I thought I'd add on to the end there. It wasn't exactly huge news, but interesting nonetheless. And then the third story I've got here is Sophie Keisha. So obviously less than two weeks ago now, she has announced that she is pregnant. That has been big news, like absolutely huge news. It has shocked a lot of people because they weren't expecting that she would be announcing a pregnancy. She has mentioned over the years, especially when she was engaged to Maddie Garrick, that they were undergoing some sort of fertility treatment to try and conceive a baby. I don't know at what point they were at in that fertility journey. But yeah, so she has indicated previously that she wants to have another child. And yeah, she has now done a YouTube video explaining the first signs of how she knew she was pregnant. Where's the YouTube video? Yep. So she's saying that for her, the first sign was that her boobs got really big. The second sign was that her skin got really bad and like she was having breakouts. The third was excessive thirst and that was eight days post ovulation. She had the positive test 10 days post ovulation. So she's saying it feels like a really long pregnancy because she's known right from the get go. And then she had the positive blood test 16 days post ovulation. So the fourth sign was that she was very tired and she was having to nap each day, which is something she doesn't normally eat and I mean do, and she's having to consciously eat because she's so tired. She's just not even wanting to eat. She's vomited twice one day, but other than that, she hasn't been very sick and her belly has bloated much quicker than previous pregnancies and she'll be going through the private hospital system. She also added that she's been wanting this for four years and she was sick of waiting for a partner to do it with. So yeah, she has thereby confirmed that she is doing this solo and yeah, she hasn't disclosed how she got pregnant. I mean, it probably is a bit yuck for us to speculate, but also it's natural to want to understand this sort of stuff, especially when she makes every detail of her pregnancy public. It's natural to want to know, I suppose, when she is openly lesbian and she does not have a partner how did she get pregnant? So I believe it was a sperm donor of some sort. I'm not sure if it was anonymous or if like she knows the person and I'm just guessing, but I'm going to guess it was um in what's it called intrauterine insemination. So a lot of people have just automatically assumed IVF, which it very well could be. And that's when you have to like get an operation, I believe, and get the um, fertilized egg, Actually, I don't know much about IVF, so I probably shouldn't be explaining it, but I think it's a more invasive procedure than IUI. So I don't know. That's just my guess. I have absolutely no idea. But what I do have an idea on is that I think she does have a partner. So she's saying that she's, well, I don't know if she's saying she's single. She's just saying she was sick of waiting for a partner to have a child with. But yeah, I think that she is in a relationship with Maddie Prasparkis. I don't know if that's how you pronounce her name. So she is an Essendon footy player. They post together all the time. So like they were at, um, like this Maddie was at her baby shower, baby shower, gender reveal, gender reveal. So she's revealed she's having a female baby, a girl. And um, yeah, she was at this and they were looking kind of coupley in some of the photos, but then she did do a post saying to, to Sophie and the two children, like, I'm so happy for you three. So that was a little bit confusing, but also maybe that's on purpose to sort of like take the scent away from this whole relationship. They yeah have posted at the Melbourne Vixens games the day after the gender reveal. Also, as soon as I added Maddie on Instagram, she blocked me straight away. So I'm really annoyed about that because I can't keep like, you know, seeing if this theory is true. But just in case you don't know, this is what she looks like. Oops, that's her there. 
And yeah, it would be very interesting if it's true because, well, they're definitely friends. And like I said, she plays for Essendon Football Club and so does Sophie Cage's ex, Sophie van der Heuvel. I think that's her name. But, and I noticed that Maddie is still following Sophie VDH, but Sophie VDH is not following Maddie. So yeah, think of that what you will, but I've got my eye on them. I have a feeling that they are in a relationship. <laughs> Okay, well that is the three stories I said I was going to talk about. Um, I have had a few requests since I posted my subjects. People wanted me to talk about Lucy Jackson, like her podcast today, talking about somebody who sold images of them without their consent. Yep, that's what Lucy and Nikki said, that somebody sold images of them without their consent and also has been bullying somebody with mental health issues. So I think at this point, it's pretty clear that the girls have a feud with Megan Pistetto from So Dramatic. Um, I think what they're referring to with the sold images is possibly the fact that Megan uploaded photos to her Patreon page of the live, the live stream that Lucy did when she was, you know, um, she's admitted that she was less than less than sober <laughs> on the live stream and that it all ended up being a disaster. I think in the end they had to like refund money to people or donate the money or something. Like there was a big ordeal about it at the time. And yeah, there were screenshots of Lucy looking quite unflattering um, during the live stream and Megan posted them to her paid Patreon page. So I'm thinking that's what they mean by posted images of them without, no, pa pa posted images of them without their consent for profit or something like that. And then also she went on to say about the bullying thing and I, she, I think that that is, I think she made it very clear that that's to do with Megan Pacetto doing journalism on Dominica Calaco and her mental health issues that she's been having of late. But yeah, uh, I don't think that feud has ended. It's been going on for quite a while now. Lucy has brought it up a few times on the podcast recently and I'm actually really loving their podcast. Like every single episode seems to have some juicy banger in it and I'm just having to listen to every episode because I'm addicted. <laughs> and yeah, all right, I'll go through the questions now. Is there anywhere to watch these after the live ends? Yes, I post all of my live streams to YouTube and I also put timestamps in the caption. So if you have a specific influencer that you are interested in, you can just like skip to that part really easily. Um, Andy said, oh, okay, that's something that's not Australian. Thoughts on the kick telephone line marketing strategy, big hype and lots of people very, very disappointed. Your opinion, the voices were a bit cringe. <laughs> That's random feedback about the voices. Um, I mean, I knew it. I knew it was going to be a letdown. I find that influencers always do these big hype ups for things and then they're a letdown. It happens all the time. I actually feel like the less they hype something up, the better of an announcement it is. It's really weird. And like they always say, oh, you know, like I'm working on something. I wish I could tell you guys, but I just can't. And then they announce it. And I'm like, you could have told us that. Like you actually could have. <laughs> But yeah, um, as I said, I was expecting that it was going to be something quite average, I suppose. And yes, it was something quite average. So um, all f oh, Laura, Steph and Kick App, yeah, Kick App, they all changed their profile picture for about a few days to like a maroon circle with a yellow bell on it. And they said, you know, something big is coming. And then they were kept posting like like pictures of maroon things for a few days. I'm like, okay, this is really giving nothing away. Turns out their announcement was that you can call a phone number to find out a Pilates routine that would work for you for the week. I think that's what it is. And that to me is just such a letdown. Um, nobody calls phone numbers anymore, but Laura and Steph were actually manning the, the phones, like some of the calls. I did try to call just because I was like, I need to call this, like FOMO. <laughs> and it just went beep, beep, beep. Like it was engaged and couldn't get through. So I guess that makes sense. Everybody was trying to call it. I did have somebody send me a screenshot saying, oh my gosh, I think Steph Klesmiss accidentally posted her personal mobile phone number to her Instagram. And I was like, oh yeah, it's like a marketing strategy. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it definitely worked in that they got so many eyes on their branding, their personal branding, as well as their kick up branding. Everybody's been talking about it. 
whether they are talking about it in a good way or a bad way, I'm not so sure, <laughs> but at least they're all talking about it. Um, Outspoken, the podcast, they did a comparison with a Bonds ad from a while ago, the bloody comfy undies, like the period undies range. And yeah, it's really crazy. The similarities in the ad, like I'm wondering if it's the same people who did it because it is so, so similar. And yeah, like if you had paid somebody to do this marketing strategy for you and they'd essentially copied the Bonds one, I'd be a little bit mad, but also it's performed so well in terms of engagement that there's probably nothing to be mad about. But yeah, the voices were a bit cringe. Uh, I don't know. I guess it was just a bit of a funny accent, wasn't it? They do like to do that sort of cringy sort of stuff on TikTok as well. So I don't know. I've come to expect that from them. I do really like their Frank Green collab. However, they've done that's sort of flown under the radar. Actually, they did a Frank Green collab recently where they did like three of the one litre water bottles and then like some protein shakers and some coffee cups. And yeah, I think they're really cute. They've got like quotes on them and the colours are really nice. I haven't bought it because I'm too tight with money, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, I think it was a very cool collaboration. And I noticed that nothing sold out. So I don't know if they were planning that or if it just hasn't sold very well. Okay, what else have we got? Oh, nobody's mentioned this yet, but Tammy Hembro's mystery surgery. So the biggest guess that's been coming through is breast explant surgery. So as in having her breast implants removed, but um, Matt posted a video yesterday or today and Tammy was like laying on the couch and he was filming side on and it definitely looked like she still had quite big boobs. So I'm wondering if she's maybe had them redone. She definitely doesn't seem very high energy in her stories of late she said that she's on a lot of painkillers and you can really tell that she's normally such like a happy vibrant person and she just seems very like tired and out of it so yeah hopefully she recovers soon she had compression socks on which would have been from for like post general anesthetic and she that's about all she's really posted she's going to do a youtube video on it and i think if it was like a breast surgery of some sort that would make sense why she's doing a youtube video because that sort of stuff people are very interested in and yeah, that's all my guesses at the moment. Um, thoughts on the EL skincare name changes? Oh, okay. This must be the Emmy Lou skincare. I didn't know she's changed the name. That's really interesting. I'm wondering if maybe, like, I don't know anything about this, but like maybe she had a name planned and then there would like a trademark issue or something, or maybe like there was feedback on the name and people didn't like it and she thought, okay, well, I'll change it before I've released it. There could be a whole heap of reasons. Maybe it was just because she wanted to keep it a secret and thought, well, I'll release a fake name and trick everybody and release the actual name closer to the date. That is so interesting. I'll have to look into that one. I wish people would send me more Emmy Lou stuff because I, I don't know, maybe my algorithm's not working. It doesn't really seem to show me her stories much. Any influences at the Olympics? Um, the only one I can think of is, oh, what's that girl's name? I just know her as like Luch, because that's what she is on TikTok. But um, she's the most watched TikTok video ever, and she's Aussie. She is at the Olympics. What's her name? Something Holton. Um, yeah, she's there. But other than that, I think that... Olivia White, she's definitely in Europe. I don't think she's at the Olympics. She went to the Taylor Swift concert recently in like Germany or something, and then she's been at Legoland. Maybe she's going to be going to the, to the Olympics at some point of her trip. But um, yeah, I haven't really seen many others. Oh, someone's saying maybe Tammy is having something to do with IVF with her surgery, but I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if she'd be doing that prior to her wedding, but then I suppose I don't know why that would make any difference. Oh, someone's saying it could be another skin cancer surgery. That's definitely true as well. Oh, someone's saying here, Olivia went to the Matilda's first game of the Olympics. So I'm guessing that's, a, oh, that's um, Olivia White, who I was just talking about. There we go. So yeah, Olivia White, she has been at the Olympics and that Holton girl. I can't believe I don't know her name. Um, Jackie Alexander is apparently there too because of her boyfriend. Oh yeah, I saw that she posted that she's now a wag because 
her boyfriend plays hockey. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's all of the questions answered. So if I didn't answer your question, please send me a DM. And also I hope you all liked the blind items that I posted last week. That was so fun. I always love doing the blind items. I try to save them and only do them like every three months because it would just get boring if I did them too often. And yeah, if you, if you saw, um, outspoken podcast, they did one, they revealed the answer to one, which is totally fine. And because I did that, I posted a bonus one during the week. So if you missed any of them, you can definitely go back and watch the highlight. And that will also show you all the ones from earlier this year. And yeah, of course, if you want the answers, you need to subscribe. There are a lot of people who subscribe. So yeah, I can, I can definitely vouch for my subscription. I feel like it's very good value and there's a lot of like um, retention in the subscribers kind of thing. Like not many people drop off. So that's always a good sign that people are liking it. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming on to watch my live tonight and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.